right. We're here today to talk about the Philadelphia Eagles free agency and what they may or may not do in the 2020 NFL draft. First, uh, I want to give a shout out to a couple of people. Uh, my man, Kevin Walls. Silk. Kevin is a Raiders fan, but um, he's from around the way. And Kevin Walls was one of the greatest high school basketball players ever. He averaged 45 points per game. And this was back, way back when, this was like 1984. No three-point line, because if, if there was a three-point line, he would have been more lethal than he was. He might have averaged 50 points a game. Um, just truly an outstanding player. He went to Louisville, and he followed uh, Milton Wagner, Milt Wagner and William Thompson, Billy Thompson. And the Camden Connection won a national championship in uh, 1986, 85, 86, what have you. Um, fantastic player. Uh, just, just McDonald's All-American, I mean, you, you name it. And unfortunately, he had a severe leg injury. Um, so much so that 20 years later, he was still getting his knee scoped at the hospital it just the, the, I guess they botched the surgery back then and I don't I don't know all the details but fantastic player secondly give a shout out to my man Chris Williams at C boxing info who pretends he's a Cowboys fan but his team is the Cleveland Browns and will always be the Cleveland Browns he says it's Dallas but come on Chris Lastly, I want to give a shout out to my main man, Varden Roberts, Vardone. And um, in San Diego, uh, excuse me, he's in Dago by way of the great state of New Jersey. Varden is my guy. He's an Eagles fan for life and so I just wanted to give a shout, some some recognition to those three guys because uh, I'm cool with all of them and I, I know that they uh, love the sport of football. And Chris, um, I get down, This yes, this is a boxing channel and I get down with Chris and on occasion Varden with the um, the boxing thing, but kind of like in seclusion right now said well let's talk about a little bit of football all right so let's start out talking about the losses and potential losses now this video's being done partially as of uh friday friday the i don't know what the date is 26 27th something like that the Friday in March before the final week of March, uh, 26, 27, something like that. All right. Losses and potential losses. Malcolm Jenkins, 32 years old. For some years, he acted as spokesman and leader of the team. Um, sometimes too outspoken as a spokesman and he asked for more money Philadelphia owed him 7.6 million for the final year of his contract and he signed a four-year deal with his former team the Saints for 32 million but only the first two years were guaranteed which is 16 million so in essence he went from 7.6 million to 8 million. He got it over two years. But I understand what's going on. 
Um, because you get that guarantee of $16 million. So you kind of get that up front. It's called working the system, folks. Um, now, most people hated the move. Um, and Philadelphia could have given him a salary bump. Sure. On the other hand, he has signing bonus money that basically pays him the same for two years, which Philadelphia paid him for one. The key, as I stated, is the guarantee. While Jenkins sent a love letter to Eagles fans saying it was never and has never been about the money. He pimped the system to an extent by working the guaranteed money. I'm not mad at him. But unlike most Eagles fans and media, I don't have a major problem with both sides parting ways. The key to this is how does Jalen Mills handle the new role moving from corner to safety? He's a physical player. He's a good tackler. And it's something that hypothetically may work. <laughs> Will it? <laughs> um, I'm looking at safety with one of my picks in the draft. Philadelphia just added one, and more on that later. Jordan Howard, 25 years old. Uh, Howard was going strong before an injury in week nine that ended things for him, like for the most part. And he was on pace for, he was on pace to become the first Eagle running back to gain 1,000 yards, 1,000 yards since 2014. That was uh, LaShawn McCoy. So he signed a two-year, $10 million deal with Miami. My take. I kind of like the combination of Howard and Miles Sanders. Um, Sanders has more dimensions in that he's great out of the backfield as a receiver, whereas Howard was more runner than anything. Um, I wish he stayed, but... There seems to be something strange about him. Um, he burst on the scene with over 1,300 yards as a rookie. And he made the Pro Bowl. And then he rushed for over 1,100 yards his next season. And he got in the end zone 15, count them, 15 times in his first two seasons. And he's a fantastic pass blocker. And excellent at yardage after contact. And so he had a good year in 2018 and fell just short of 1,000 yards again while splitting time with Tariq Cohen. For some reason, um, Chicago decided to trade him to the Eagles for a sixth rounder. Um, that was a mistake, in my opinion, for the Eagles. And I, I, I think they lost a gem. So now you have, what do you have? Elijah Holyfield and Boston Scott to back Sanders. Yeah, I, that's, that's not going to work. I, I think another piece must be added to the equation there. So we'll see. Nelson Aguilar, 26 years old, signed a one-year deal with the Las Vegas Raiders. My take. Okay. <laughs> Here's where I differ again with most Eagles fans and media. I like Nelson. I mean, he runs great routes, has good speed, and he has energy after he catches passes and the Eagles don't win the Super Bowl without his big catches in that game, especially the big three catches kind of late. Um, 
just based on location, I think it's good for Nelson to restart elsewhere. Um, playing in Philadelphia is probably the toughest city to do so, fan-wise. And I'm speaking all sports combined. Uh, ask any former Philadelphia Philly who went into a slump or a former... 76er who was good for another team and then came to Philly and, and began to slump or an, or an Eagle who didn't produce tough place to play, man, <laughs> ask Santa Claus, ask the Pope. <laughs> and so Nelson is one of those type of guys who's like sensitive, like he, he's an overthinker. So in that respect, I'm happy for him to get away and, Philadelphia fans definitely agree with him being gone. They they they're happy for other reasons that he's away. So best wishes to you, Nelson. Um, a start somewhere else might be the thing you need. You back out on the West Coast, on the left coast, uh, where you play college ball. So we'll see. Um, Corey Clement. The Eagles didn't offer, they didn't tender an offer to him, so he's a free agent. He's free to sign with anyone. My take, um, Clement is a local guy from across the bridge, and he had a good rookie year, and without him, Philadelphia doesn't win that Super Bowl either. Not because he was part of, not because he was part of one of the greatest plays in Super Bowl history the Philly Philly thing, or as you guys call it, Philly special. But he was only the fourth rookie to have 100 yards receiving in a Super Bowl. And he also had a 55-yard reception and a 22-yard touchdown catch. So he was an undrafted guy who worked hard, made the team, and won a Super Bowl. You can never take that away from him. Good kid. Um, he made his biggest impact on the world's biggest stage. So Eagles fans should never forget him for that. But some already have. Let's move on. Vinny Curry, 31 years old. Now, Vinny spent years on the Eagles bench and was a situational player, usually on pass rushing downs. He didn't start a game for five years. But once again, he started during that 2017 Super Bowl run and was a key member. Um, at age 31, he's getting up there a bit, but still good enough for a decent deal. Don't know where he's going to wind up. And as I stated, I'm doing this on Friday, so he may have signed already I don't know I think the Jets will sign him um, not just because he's a New Jersey guy who probably wants to stay near home but because they need him and it's a nice fit for the Jets for a short term um, like a short term void to fill so we'll see uh Kamo Grujay Hill, um, 25 years old. He signed a one-year deal with the Dolphins. And I don't know the terms, but in his final year in Philadelphia, he made $720,000 out of a deal that paid him $2.6 million over four years. <clears throat> so my take... Bruje Hill is the type of linebacker I like. Superior speed at linebacker. Sideline to sideline. Athletic freak. 39 inch vertical. Six foot two. 230. He ran like a 445. Um, quick feet, loose hips, good blitz, uh, good blitzing type of guy, and a good tackler. And he was a special teams ace. 
if I remember, I'll leave a video of him filling in for the kicker and kicking the ball off against the Cowboys, and he kicked it to the goal line. Just, just an athlete. Um, Philadelphia's history of spending when it comes to linebackers and safeties just isn't on par. In a 4-3 defense, you want guys like this, even if you don't start them. This guy can play inside or outside. To me, it's a loss. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about a few guys and injuries. So last year was supposed to be his breakout year, but he got injured twice. And he played a lot of the season hurt from training camp, um, from an injury he got in training camp. But he played through it. Then he got a concussion, but he didn't tell the coach who became sour. Okay. That's ironic because Doug Peterson is infamous for lying about injuries. You know, I mean, he made me sick with all the BS about Deshaun Jackson and the others. Look, Doug, just say what the injury is and keep it moving. And so I thought it was a bit hypocritical of Peterson to get mad at this guy and the pressures of the NFL and playing for a contract or not to lose a spot. Go back to a uh, former Patriot, Ted Johnson, when he was discussing Bill Belichick, uh, uh, I meant Belichick. Ted talked about being pressured to play with concussions and other injuries out of fear of losing his job because that was the culture there in New England. You understand? Who cares about CTE and whatever else? Get your butt on the field. If you can walk, you can play. And so, um, Groove J. Hill, the, I mean, the kid was trying to put up numbers because he was up for a deal. And then they finally shut him down because of a bad back he had all year which now requires surgery. Personally, I'm going to miss this kid. Um, I saw good things ahead for him. So what do you do? Well, we add a linebacker in his place. All right, more on him later. Let's go to Timmy Jernigan, 27 years old. I like Timmy. Um, he had good years in 2015, 2016, and 2017. In the last two years, he was a starter. Um, in 2018, he only played three games, and in 2019, he played 10 games and started nine. Um, Philadelphia, I guess, determined he wasn't worth his asking price. In 2017, he signed a four-year, $48 million contract with $26 million guaranteed. Okay. He got a $26 million guarantee. And Philadelphia decided to cut its losses, it seems. And if he finds no takers, maybe he lowers whatever demands he had and takes a one-year minimum deal. It's not likely, but we'll see. Jason Peters, 38 years old. Uh, more than likely he's gone. Um, they left the window open for his return, but I think he gets snatched up by one of the few teams that have more than slight interest in him. So, my take. Jason Peters will go down as one of the best undrafted players ever all right he was signed by buffalo as an undrafted free agent they brought him in as a tight end but then he he beat out um a, a starting tackle pretty much in buffalo and, and he won the job um So he, he 
didn't like his original deal in Buffalo, which was five years, $15 million contract extension. And so he held out. And then he got traded to the Eagles. And Philly awarded him with a 10-year, $60 million extension. And he went to nine, count them, nine Pro Bowls. More importantly, he got six All-Pro selections. Two first team and four second team. Pro Bowls are Pro Bowls, and sometimes they're popularity things. But if you're named All-Pro, that's, that's, uh, it doesn't get any bigger than that. So that is a great career and a great move by the Eagles to see his value at the time. And I think if you're Philadelphia and you could get him at a discount, then bring him back. If not, you drafted Andre Dillard as, as his uh, replacement. Now, Dillard isn't the same guy uh, as Peters. Um, he's good at uh, pass blocking. He's he's got good feet. He's got good feet for for the uh, speed rushers, but the power guys are the question. He's unproven against these edge guys who come with power. Um, Dillard also isn't the kind of guy who run blocks with power and nastiness expected from a guy who's six foot five and over three hundred fifteen pounds. So. We'll see how he continues to develop, but his time may be now. It is now. Um, on a side note, my uh, brother-in-law, he is Jason Peters. He's Jason Peters' um, chauffeur. He drives limousine and uh, takes drives Peters to all the home games. And I think if... If they play the Giants and and the Redskins, I think he drives them there too, on uh, for the road games. But so we'll see how that that plays. <clears throat> Ronald Darby, twenty six years old. Now here's a player I'll disagree with. Another player I'll disagree with Eagles fans with. I think they should look to keep Darby especially with the addition of Slay. However, a source told me someone is talking to him about a one-year deal and that someone is not Philadelphia-based. So, personally, I'd like to move Rasul Douglas instead. Um, Listen, the guy can't cover. I don't get the love affair with Russell Douglas. If anything, Douglas seems to have the build of someone that you might want to experiment at safety other than uh, Jalen Mills or even an undersized linebacker, if you dare, in some schemes like you did Jenkins. I mean... It would it would be him I try a safety just as much as Mills. Nevertheless, um, as a cover guy, I don't think Darby is as bad as fans want to vilify him. He's been injured, just like my other Florida State guy, um, Timmy Jernigan. Mills has been injured, and he got hurt twice last season. And he, and he couldn't get any continuity um, after sitting. So, but I like to keep him. But I think he and Vinny Curry could wind up with like the Jets or the Redskins or something like that. Um, so we'll see. Maybe the Texans give him a look. Um, cause they, they're, they're going to be a little, uh, cornerback poor, um, shit, or maybe the lions will swap DBs <laughs> because the kid they got from Atlanta is not that guy. True font. 
No. Okay. Halapuli, Vitae, Vitae, or Big V. 26 years old. He signed a deal with Detroit. Um, he's, he's good against the run. Not sure if he could hold. Um, not sure if he could hold up without holding. Not sure if he could hold. What I mean is against the solid pa uh, or the elite pass rushers, I saw some struggles there. My take on him, listen, the Eagles made a business decision here, and it was the correct one, in my opinion. Um, Vitae earned $2.5 million in his four-year deal with the Eagles. For Detroit, he agreed to a five-year, $50 million deal. Now, tell me what you do if you were Vitae. And then tell me what you do if you ran the Eagles. Um, that kind of money didn't fit into their plans. And you can't pay him and Andre Dillard. So I have no problem with uh, Big V leaving. All right. Um, Darren Sproles. You also have Darren Sproles retiring. His body, the injuries, the age. It was just that time for him. Um, he gave his all in the small frame he has. I mean, here's a guy who has to look up to Boston Scott when he speaks to him. You know what I mean? They list Sproles at five foot six, but you can't convince me he is. All right. So, who have the Eagles? So, those are guys who... Those were losses or potential losses. All right, so now let's jump to who have the Eagles signed. All right, Javon Hargrave, 27 years old, signed a three-year, $39 million deal with the Eagles. My take. Um, This is a bit of an experiment. He played the, in a 3-4 scheme as a nose tackle in Pittsburgh. And he won't do that in Philadelphia's 4-3 lineup. He'll be a defensive tackle. And while it's a change, Pittsburgh didn't always run a traditional 3-4. Uh, they mixed it up a little. And it's going to be different because he's going in there to, to stuff gaps. Whereas the other guys like Malik Jackson and Fletcher Cox, they get off the ball fast and at the quarterback or running back. But don't get it twisted, friends. Solid interior guy. This kid can play. Um, the problem I have is how much of a need was he to give him $39 million? Of which $26 million is guaranteed. I thought that money could have filled other needs. Just my opinion. Um, but the philosophy, and I get it, is to have depth at that position, as we did in 2017. And then begin to wear teams down with that depth. Two guys come out. Two fresh guys come in. They play an X amount of downs, and then they go out, and the other guys come in. And instead of like those hogs in the early 80s and the, the Dallas offensive line in the 90s, instead of the offensive line wearing you down, you wear them down with the substitutions. So I, I get that. And if that's the game they played, then so be it. Um, We'll just have to see how this one plays out. Um... I was on the fence, but I'm coming around now. I mean, Hargrave ain't exactly former 3-4 defense uh, Gilbert Brown. Gilbert Brown was just, he never left outside of the guards. And I think he gives you more than that, and that's welcome in the 4-3 look. So we'll see. Next up. 
Darius Slay, 29 years old, was acquired from Detroit for a third rounder and a fifth rounder. Slay then signed a three-year, $50 million deal with $30 million guaranteed. Um, Slay is 29, and when the deal expires, he'll be 32. And I think just starting to slide out of his physical prime, maybe, maybe just like a tiny drop off. Um, Slay can cover the top wideouts and he can follow them wherever they line up. Now, will he be used that way? That's the question. We'll see. Um, I do think Slay is going to get quite a few pass interference calls on him just because of how he finishes plays. However, I also think he's going to get some interceptions, which will be welcome. <laughs> Overall, you have to give the Eagles a good grade on this pick. Um, it'll help whoever is on the other side of the defense as well as the pass rush. It'll help our pass rush. We just better make sure we get the 2017 version of Slay and not the 2019 guy. Um, either way, it's a deal that had to be made with someone. So he's our guy. You know, hopefully they'll use him as Detroit did and not make the mistake we made with Namdi Asamwa some years back. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Jatavis Brown, 26 years old. He was signed in, he was signed as a fill-in as far as I'm concerned. To me, he's not a starter but a guy they may try to throw in as a starter. I'm very concerned about linebacker, and I'd take Gruje Hill over this guy in a heartbeat. Now, he will play special teams as Gruje Hill did, but a move needs to be made here. I mean, you lost Gruje Hill, you, you cut Nigel Bradham, so you have Nathan Gary and Duke Riley, but in this draft, I may go wide receiver, linebacker, and then decide between lineman, quarterback, or another wide receiver based on how the picks are shuffled between Dow and the draft. I like Kenneth Murray in the draft if they go that route. He's he should be a late first rounder, but he's an NFL starter, so they may somebody may grab him early. This kid can fly to the football and he's a great tackler. Um he needs to get better in coverage. But this would be a great pickup if they could get him. If someone grabs him, there's Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen at LSU. If you can move up to get him, then grab him. If he drops, take him. He's rated below Murray, but this guy can cover. Murray's better against the run. Queen is better against the pass. If these guys are taken, there's still some value at linebacker. Um, Murray is a classic inside linebacker. Zach Bond is one of those guys like a Lawrence Taylor or a TJ Watt who can line up as an edge rusher or you can put him inside or outside. So he's a versatile ver versatile guy, in other words. Um, Zach Bond, okay. And I promised I wasn't gonna do this, but I gotta check something on my computer. And I shouldn't be doing this. Um, so, the rankings right now, you have Isaiah Simmons ranked as number one linebacker. Kenneth Murray is number two. See, Simmons will be gone. Murray may be an outside chance at, with the 21st pick. Patrick Queen and then Zach Bond out of Wisconsin. So, those are your top four guys. Um, 
But another guy I like, and let's see, he's rated 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Another guy I like, I'm telling you, who might be right. No, he'll definitely be there is Jordan Brooks from Texas Tech. A tackling machine. I'd grab him as an inside guy. He gets the job done. Um, and then there's Jacob Phillips from LSU, who is a sleeper, who could wind up as a great one, but it comes down to discipline and consistency. You can say that with anyone, but especially this guy. Like if he can, if he can just get some discipline, the consistency will come. If he can get some discipline, he could be a steal. So in other words, what I'm saying is, you notice I'm saying with that first pick, I wouldn't mind going linebacker and then receiver. If you're saying this is such a big time talented receiver class, then maybe you go linebacker, which is, which is just as big a need for you right now. Um, now you're putting band-aids on stuff right now. So get somebody, get some value there. And, but the point I'm making with all of this is you need more than Jatavis Brown. Um, you also got a guy, TJ Edwards, who might be worth a hard look. He's good in coverage. So it depends. If you go, if you, if, if you're definitely going linebacker and you're sitting at 21 and they get to like 17, you got to move up. If Murray's on the board, you got to move up and take him. Um, if Queen is on the board, you got to take him. The rest of the guys, Bond, Brooks, um, Phillips will probably fall down to you at 21. Um, all right, let's move on. Will Parks, 25. He's a guy brought in for depth. I don't think he's a starter, but the Jalen Mills experiment, experiment may fail. If it does, you just bought yourself some insurance because Parks can play in the box he could play in the slot or cover two, meaning the dime or the nickel guy. He also plays special teams, which is a plus. Um, like Brown, to me, it's just to add depth. I still like a safety and linebacker added by way of draft and or free agency. So with Parks and Brown, these are one-year deals so the Eagles can move on if it doesn't work out. So I'll, I'll deal with the Parks and Brown deals because of that. And if they just made a deal for Nikhil Roby Coleman, 29. Talking about a guy that can't cover. Man, he he makes a uh, Russell who does. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. This, there, here's the guy who made not one, but three obvious pass interference calls in that Saints game, including the infamous no call late. Um, outside of that, though, he, he <laughs> like I said, we got Douglas and now we got this guy. He talked about two guys that can't cover, but I'm. I'm joking. He's he's only five foot eight, and the Eagles already have a, a couple of corners with below average height who are going to cover the slot. So that part is head scratching. Uh, Roby Coleman had zero interceptions in 2019 and one interception in 2018, and so the only sense I can make about it is somebody's about to get traded. And I'm desperately hoping it's Rasul Douglas and not Sidney Jones. I hope Philadelphia, I know the fans have, I hope the organization has not given up on Sidney. 
Um, however, the difference here is to use Roby Coleman for what he does best. So, once again, why another slot guy? You have a couple already. Avante Maddox, LeBlanc. Um, he's a nickel guy, which we already have. But seriously, I think Roby Coleman is here to start. He specializes in slot coverage, and he's decent with it. Trust me. So I'm not going to define him for the horrible game he played on the big stage. I'm okay with Roby Coleman if you allow him to shine at what he does best. Cover the slot guy. Be that nickel corner. That dime, Some dime packages also. with. So with the addition of Roby Coleman, Douglas... Is definitely gone. Maybe Douglas and Sydney. I still have faith in Sydney, but <laughs> I got to tell you, the the defensive coordinator is going to have to be on the ball with all this depth on defense, minus the linebackers right now. Um, what I refer to the Eagles secondary is this organized confusion they got bodies but they'll be playing roles that are either not familiar with or that aren't their strengths um it's like the movie batman and robin you know batman great franchise george clooney great actor but george clooney as batman it didn't work that's not to say anything bad about Clooney. That's not to say anything bad about the Batman franchise. It just didn't work. And so that's kind of like the Eagles defense, at least the back end of it. Um, these moves tell me that they're looking like they're going to put Avante Maddox on the opposite side of Darius Slay. I'm not sure it's going to work. Um... Just like I'm not sure the Jalen Mills exper experiment will work. And that's why some of these deals were made. Okay, I'll slide Mills back to the opposite corner that Slay is. Now I think that works. Because Mills doesn't have any experience playing safety. Then you move the, um, the Parks kid where Mills was or and then McLeod is your other guy I, I think now you're cooking but who am I so who signed with the Eagles that was already there you got speaking of Mr. McLeod safety Rodney McLeod 29 years old defensive back Jalen Mills 25 years old defensive tackle Hassan Ridgeway 25 years old quarterback Nate Sudfield 26 years old Okay. Um, defensive tackle is set with Fletcher Cox, Javon Hargrave, Malik Jackson, and Hassan Ridgeway. Malik Jackson's on the uh, firing line. Um, Derek Barnett, Brandon Graham are solid at defensive end. And I'm expecting bigger things from my Florida State guy, Josh Sweat. Your time to shine, son. Wide receiver is not going to cut it, all right? I would like to see them go low price or one or two year deal with a veteran wide receiver, but it doesn't appear that'll happen, at least not with the top couple of guys. So if the Eagles don't trade up to grab a Judy, I guess these guys still go wide receiver in the first round. But I still wouldn't be shocked if it's linebacker, then receiver, instead of the other way around. And right now, everyone seems to believe it'll be Justin Jefferson. Listen, he's cool, but something is missing with him. Look. Look. Every player in the history of the draft has weaknesses, okay? I get that. But what they are getting in Jefferson, I think they can get with a couple of others. Jefferson is a number two receiver. 
who plays better in the slot than outside right now. And I'm not sure that's what you want. I mean, he could develop, but I like Denzel Mims better. I think Jalen Rigor is on even par with him, but faster. Brian Edwards is more complete than Jefferson. Um, LaVisca Chenault isn't as fast as Jefferson or anybody for that matter, but he's a blue collar Philly tough guy, a guy fans would love, but he's also Anquan Bolden in the speed department and Bolden only, only finished his career with 1000 plus receptions, close to 14,000 yards receiving and 82 touchdowns. So basically Bolden said, take the word speed and shove it. Um, here's the deal. And everybody, once somebody who sounds intelligent says something, uh, everybody kind of follows up and says the same thing. I'm gonna take a drink of water. Hold on for a second. Oh yeah. Ah, I needed that boy. All right. Here's the thing. The draft is loaded with wide receivers. Everybody says that. Because one Einstein said it. Everybody, oh man, this is a great wide receiver. It's loaded. But once again, how many are number ones? Jerry Judy is. Um, C.D. Lamb projects as one too. Henry Ruggs III is not a number one receiver. He's Tyreek Hill, fast as heck, but not a number one. Justin Jefferson, he'd have to work hard over the course of some years, but he's not. Denzel Mims can be a number one, in my opinion. And he rates lower than the top seven or so guys and I just don't understand why he's six foot three lanky six foot three 207 pounds he wins all the jump balls he ran a four three eight 40 that's sub four four folks great hands great route runner I think he's a steal if Philadelphia can get him now the one thing they say about him is he needs to work on lateral quickness. But <laughs> once again, he, he's six foot three and lanky. So he's not going to go lateral like a Tyreek Hill. Who cares? <sighs> I'm going Mims. So, you know, I like Kenneth Murray or Patrick Queen in the draft at linebacker. I think they are reachable. With a little maneuvering, uh, uh, maneuvering even, uh, I think they they may be um, they're reachable. I like Mims at wide receiver. If you can't get him, there are guys like Jefferson or Ruggs the third. If you want a speed guy who's not a number one. If you're looking for an Alshon Jeffrey type replacement, T Higgins is your guy. Um, if these guys fall. You have to take the best available in the second round, which will probably be LaVisca Chenault Jr. Um, he's your guy. Very physical guy. No speed. Breaks tackles. Just think Anquan Bolden. Um, other picks, if you grab another running back, I like Cam Akers. That would be a steal. If Christian Fulton is available from LSU, then grab him. Um, he's a corner who can cover the slot. Good size and speed, but then again, I think you've got your guys for the slot, right? Um, offensive line depth, I like Austin Jackson, USC. And um, most linemen are experiments. And this kid is very intelligent and athletic. And it boils down to handling speed rushes with him. And he needs to get stronger. Also, there's Prince Tega Wanago. Or no go. Um, athletic, good feet, needs to develop, but he may drop. And if he does, 
there's offensive line depth if the Eagles want to use the late second or early third rounder. Um, more than likely the early third rounder. So, where are the Eagles at this point? Well, in free agency, I give the Eagles a C. I'm not as excited about what's been done as others. Okay, players come and players go. You replace the linebacker with a one-year guy who isn't better than he was, in my opinion. You've done nothing at wide receiver. You are trying an experiment at safety with Mills. You grabbed another safety on a one-year deal and he probably won't start. That is what you call purchasing insurance in case Mills is an epic failure. Got it. Then he can move back to corner and maybe even start if Maddox is struggling badly, which could happen. <laughs> Listen, folks, those scenarios could happen, okay? All right. The experiment with uh, Mills could fail. So you grab another safety, you swap him in, move Mills to corner, and then have Maddox kind of get off the corner and into the slot where you have another slot guy who can cover also. So this stuff can happen. So who starts? I mean, if Mills is your starter, in essence, replacing Malcolm Jenkins, then McLeod is the other. Then Parks was brought in for depth, maybe, right? Like I stated, I think the same thing happens with Jatavis Brown, a linebacker depth and special teams pickup. But they got to do something or he's going to wind up being your starter. And so, as I stated earlier, Maddox will probably start one corner opposite Slay. And then Sidney Jones will back up Slay. And Rasul Douglas, for the time being, will back Maddox up. I'm just not so sure Avante is an outside corner. I just don't, I, I, I don't think he is. You also have sort of an experiment with the defensive tackle who played nose guard in a different scheme. I can di dig that. Back to receiver, though. You have to address the Alshon Jeffrey situation. Two thoughts I have, and... Probably neither one will happen. First, because of the Roby Coleman deal, has Rasul Douglas. Because, okay, I'm sorry. If, because, let me see, Roby. Yeah, you try to move Rasul Douglas and some picks to Carolina for DJ Moore. I hope it's Rasul and not Sydney if they do that. If that happens, Philadelphia goes from a C to a B in free agency. Maybe even a B plus. Secondly, if, and I know this won't happen, if you can get Jacksonville to just eat just a bit of Alshon Jeffrey's salary, or even if you don't and move him in a couple of picks and you can somehow get the deal to grab um, Yannick, and Dankwell, this grade goes from a C to an A. If that and the DJ Moore things happen easily. Then the focus goes to receiver and linebacker and corner in the draft. Unfortunately, nobody with any sense will take on the injured Alshon salary. With Alshon, um... You got to put him on the uh, physically unable to perform list and he'll have to sit out the first, what is it, seven games, nine games, something like that. Because he's he's not going to be able to play, not with a list rank injury. Um, My dream free agency situation in draft, basically it would require moving Jeffrey and whatever for Yannick and then getting the linebacker Murray or Queen and then Mims at receiver. And then you can use the remaining picks to take a stab at a corner, some athletic lineman, or a running back. Um, and then if somehow you could move whatever else you had left 
for DJ Moore, man, if he came to Philly, the Eagles may use their first pick in the draft to grab the Murray or the Queen at linebacker or C.J. Henderson or Kristen Fulton or Trayvon Diggs at the corner. But if none of the aforementioned stuff happens, listen, the Philadelphia Eagles have eight draft picks. Um, They got a first rounder, number 21, a second rounder, number 53, a third rounder, number 103. Then they have three fourth rounders, a fifth rounder and a sixth rounder. So if they can somehow move up by swapping a third and one of your three fourths to get two second rounders, then I think they can get a solid wide receiver, a linebacker and a corner. And I believe this for two reasons. First, Somebody at linebacker and receiver um, and maybe corner is going to drop. It always happens. I'm hoping it's Mims, but it could be Jefferson or Higgins or Chenault at receiver. At linebacker, I don't think Murray will drop, but it could be Queen or Simmons, even though <sighs> Simmons, if he dropped, it's not going to be. Uh, far. Um, at defensive back, I don't think it'll be Okuda, but maybe Henderson, Fulton, Diggs, or even AJ Terrell will be there. The second reason is there will be somebody in the first or second round who will look to trade down to acquire picks. This could be a gold mine for Philly to move one or two of their fourth rounders and nab who they want before someone else grabs them. Now, I know this will sound like a dumb statement, but this is the prime example where you have, where you have a draft board. This is the prime reason why you need a draft board. I, I know that sounds dumb because everybody has one, but that moving down and moving up, because at linebacker, wide receiver, and defensive back, it could come down to picking the highest rated player available on the board when the Eagles pick comes up. So in other words, all three of those positions, you might have a guy that you really want to grab, but you got to look at your board and say, I'm going with the highest rated guy. Need is need, but talent, you go for the highest rated guy. So if they can't decide and there's a DB, a linebacker and a receiver they equally want, you take the best player available and try to make a deal to get one of the other two um, next time by trading up. Okay, so this is going to be fun. I Usually I just say, hey, the draft is on. Let me see who the Eagles are going to pick. Let me see who the Cowboys are going to pick. Um, so on and so forth. But I'm actually excited this year because I'm telling you – if they can come out with a a good draft, it doesn't have to be great. But if they can, if they can somehow these first three picks they get, whether they trade up for that with that with a couple of those fourth rounders to get a third or a second, or trade up with the third to get two seconds, this is this could be big, man. This could be big, and free agency could still be big for them. It's not over, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It probably won't go the way that I said, but a veteran linebacker at this point is slim pickings. Same with receiver. So even though it's not over, that free agency may kind of be over for the Eagles. Um, I'm not looking for role players right now. If you're going to make a deal for Yannick or DJ Moore, then make it. And hey, dare I say, Jadavian Clowney's out there. Philadelphia wouldn't pick up the phone to talk to him, right? Right? Catch you guys later. E. A. G. L. E. S. <laughs>